Hi, welcome along to the channel. Again, everybody, good to see you. Before anything else, please do hit that subscribe button. So many of you have subscribed to my channel recently, it's massively appreciated, but for those of you who haven't, please give it a click. Also, do remember to give me a thumbs up if at the end of this video you've enjoyed the content and hit that notifications bell so you never miss a video. Right, that's the housekeeping out of the way. Today, what are we gonna talk about? We're gonna be talking all about Microsoft Purview, which is my very favorite subject within Microsoft 365 and compliance. Specifically, we're gonna be looking at exact data match, EDM classifiers, which are really, really cool things indeed. These are things that you can use to create uh, EDM sensitive information types that you can use within things like DLP and uh, other features within Microsoft Purview. We've referenced these briefly in our MS102 video series, but we didn't really drill down into it. This is the deep dive in how you set up EDM classifiers. Exact data match in Microsoft Purview. It's coming right up. So we've talked a little bit about EDM or exact data match in previous videos when we did the MS-102 exam series on this channel. We're going to dive deeper into exact data match classifiers now and actually set one up. We do that from the compliance portal at compliance.microsoft.com. I'm connected as a global admin here and we can see uh, that I am in the data classification classifiers section. We've been in here before, we've looked at sensitive information types, we've looked at trainable classifiers. EDM classifiers do actually create uh, a sensitive information type. You can see I already have three in here. I have national insurance classifier, I have uh, inventively named test EDM, and I have US financial data classifier. Now, if we go to sensitive information types here, we can see uh, all of these sits that are in here. And if we filter by publisher, we can see that we have these three sensitive information types in here and the type of them are exact match classification types or sensitive info types. How do we get these here though? Let's go and do another one. So how we can do this is we can create our own uh, exact data match uh, CSV file to upload, or we can use industry specific sample files. There are three that are provided by Microsoft that we can see here that you can easily download. We have US healthcare data, US insurance data, and US financial data. I've already used these two bottom ones, the US insurance data and the US financial data. Admittedly, I slightly renamed the insurance one to be national insurance classifier to make it look a little bit more UK because we call that uh, national insurance in the UK. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the last one here, the US healthcare data template. I've downloaded the CSV file. I've put that CSV file into a folder that I've created on my Windows 10 device here, which is called CEDM. Um, and I've put that sample file in there all ready to go. We can open that up. We can take a look and we can see what's in that sample file. Uh, we can just expand all of the uh, the columns there, and we've got our social security number column, we've got our individual ID, account ID, MRN, first name, last name, date of birth, phone, and email in there. We've got some good data. So this is an example of the sort of format that you can use, and you can produce your own. And there's guidance on how to produce your own, which we can find on learn.microsoft.com. I'll include all of the usual links that will help you to... Uh, to do that, but let's get going. Let's create an EDM classifier. There are two experiences. There's the classic and the new. Um, I'm gonna use the new one. I'm not gonna talk about the classic one. You can learn more about why there are two experiences here, but we're gonna focus on the new and we're gonna create an EDM classifier. Now, what will we call our classifier? Well, this one is going to be for healthcare data. So I'm going to put in US 
health care classifier. And what this is going to do is it's going to create a schema file in the form of an XML, which you'll be able to download at a later stage using a tool that you need to download. Uh, and we'll get to that point as we go through this creation of the classifier. Put in a good description for your classifier here. For once, the description field is actually mandatory. So uh, being lazy as I am, I'll just copy and paste the name and put that in the description. But do put good descriptions in if you're doing this for real. We have two options here for choosing a method for defining your schema. It recommends uploading a file containing sample data. This method is faster, helps you to identify errors uh, when mapping sensitive info types to sensitive data. And we're going to extract field names from the sample files that you upload to create the schema and recommend sensitive information types to map the sample field to. Here again, you can view the sample files that you can use. Those are the three that we have. So uh, what you can also do at this point though, is you can manually define your structure. You'll have to name the fields, choose which sensitive info types best match them and you can learn how to manually define your schema. So let's open up that in a new tab. We'll have that for the uh, description of the video a bit later. Um, let's have this one as well. Okay, what happens if you select that one? Do you get any sort of different choices? Yes, you do. You have to go through and add all your columns and uh, select your primary elements and choose column settings. We'll not do this one, it's just to give you an idea of, of what that process looks like. We'll do it the recommended way, and that will get you a, a starter feel for how this works. So let's go next. We need to upload our sample file now, which if you'll remember, I have already placed in my EDM folder on my Windows 10 device. The file should not exceed 2.5 megabytes. I'm gonna to go to upload that file now. I'm gonna to go to my EDM folder and I'm gonna look for my US healthcare sample file, CSV, there it is. We are uploading the file. It takes a few seconds to analyze the file. Here we go, a nice little spinning wheel there. And here we go. We can see our sample data here. Review that from the data uploaded to make sure it's accurate. So we've got nine items in here based on the column names and the sample data. And this looks exactly like what we saw. We've got our social security number, our IDs, etc., etc. Click next. Okay, so what we have in here is selecting the primary elements. Now, what you will see is the columns and the sensitive info type that it is derived from this. So Microsoft. 365 is making intelligent decisions for what the column name could potentially match to in terms of a built-in sensitive information type or a custom one that you have created. We can see the SSN, the social security, has matched to a US social security number and that is giving us a full match. The next one down, individual ID, it has matched that one to a Malaysia passport number which is giving us a partial match. So you will have to make your judgments as you go through here in terms of, are these the right decisions by Microsoft? If not, you can take those off uh, and try and match your own. For example, account ID, if we wanted to try and match that one manually to a sensitive information type, we could go in and search for account ID, uh, hit enter and there's nothing really here that is going to be a, a realistic match for account ID here so but if there was you could select it as your primary element for uh, for your schema um, if there's not a built-in sit that is suitable you can you can do your own custom sit so there is potentially a lot of work to be done in terms of uh, matching these up. You don't have to select all of these here. So let's read through this actually. So it, it describes it more eloquently than, than I will. So this step is to let 
Microsoft know which columns contain the main data you want to detect, and these are called the primary elements. They rely on existing sensitive info types to match content detected in files and messages with your actual data. You can set up to 10 primary elements and each must have a sensitive info type mapped to it. Let's get some tips for completing that step. It's not gonna let me right click, hopefully it will. All right, it opens a, a fly out window rather than a, uh, than a learn doc. So um, what has happened here? Microsoft has pre-selected sensitive info types that are good matches for the sample data in the columns. Some columns might contain data for which we couldn't automatically detect a matching set, uh, but you can select them yourself, which we just tried to do. Select up to 10 primary elements, so decide which columns contain data that will be used as a primary element, which is the main information you want to detect in the content. You can map one sensitive info type to each primary element, which we've just seen. We can review the match validations. Now we've seen a full match and a partial match here, we can also see no match. So see how well the pre-selected sensitive info types match the data included in each column. A full match means the sensitive info type is a great match for all data in the column. A partial match means the sensitive info type doesn't match all the data in the column, but can still be used as a primary element. And no match means that we couldn't automatically match the data to an existing info type you can select one manually or exit the wizard and create or update a sensitive info type, a custom sensitive info type that maps to your data. We've got an informational alert here that says, if a column doesn't already have a sensitive info type mapped to it, or if you want to change a pre-selected one, you can manually choose a sensitive info type, we'll then validate it against the data in the column to let you know whether it's a good match. Okay, there we go. Do we need to map a sensitive info type to other columns? No, it's not required. Any column not selected as a primary element can be used as a supporting element later in the wizard. Although it's uncommon to map sensitive info types to columns used as supporting elements, there are a few scenarios where it might be useful. Learn about these scenarios, yes please, we'll have that link so you can review it later on. All right, let's close that off. Okay, for this example, um, what uh, what shall we do? Let's just, we'll leave this one pretty much as it is. Even though that's a partial match, I'm gonna leave that as it is. So I'm gonna select um, both of those. And what it's telling us here, that the selected column data is not unique. Select a primary field that contains unique or near unique values for each row. This reduces the likelihood of unnecessary matches that could cause exceeding the limits processed by uh, EDM, resulting in missed detections. So you can select anyway, or you can cancel. So now that I've got that warning, I kind of don't want to proceed with selecting that one. So I'm going to leave that one unselected. And now I'm going to proceed on to the next stage of the wizard, which is to configure settings for data in the selected columns. You can apply settings to all columns in your schema file or configure different settings for each column. Learn more about these settings. Yes, please, we'll have that for our description. So here we have a toggle switch here. We can use the same settings for all columns. We can toggle that on or off as needed. If we set that to no, we can go in and make some decisions here. We can uh, go and uh, clear the case insensitive column selection here for our items in our uh, CSV file that we've uploaded. And we can go in and we can edit these. We can go in and edit and choose the delimiters and punctuation to ignore for the, uh, for the social security number, for example. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go and uh, use the same settings for all the columns. What we can do here is we can ignore delimiters and punctuation for data in all columns. What does this mean? Well, values you choose or add manually will be ignored when detecting matches for data in all searchable columns. So for example, if a column contains a social security number consisting of a nine digit number, such as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we detect content containing one, two, three, dash, four, five, dash, six, seven, eight, nine. It won't be a match unless you choose to ignore hyphens. Really cool description. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Be sure to specify values that are supported by the sensitive info types that map to this schema. For example, again, 
If you selected the sensitive info type US Social Security Numbers or SSN, you might ignore hyphens because by default that info type can detect numbers that are formatted with hyphens. You wouldn't include other punctuation like an asterisk or um, because the uh, info type doesn't include that punctuation in detected patterns. So if you don't want this to apply to all columns, clear this checkbox and specify unique values to ignore for each one. So good information there, very handy. But if you do check that, these selections here become grayed, uh, ungrayed out, I should say, and we can choose delimiters to ignore. So we can choose to ignore things like underscores and spaces and hyphens and, and whatnot. And you can add these delimiters and punctuations separated by commas as well, rather than from the drop down. I'll leave that one unchecked and we'll proceed through. Okay, next. Um, here we have our detection rules for our primary elements, and uh, we can look at these and edit them. So each primary element can contain up to three rules, each with a unique confidence level that helps to determine how likely the sensitive info type detected in content exactly matches the primary element. Confidence typically increases when more supporting elements are detected within close proximity of the primary element. So. We've added supporting elements and character proximity for high and medium confidence rules below in here. And we'll take a look in a second. You can edit them uh, and also add a low confidence rule if needed. Learn about detection rules. Yes, please, we'll have that. So detect supporting elements within this many characters of the primary elements that we have selected. So this is set to 300 by default. We can toggle that up and down as needed. And what this is going to do is when the primary element is matched, any supporting elements will match only when found within this proximity to that primary element. So the closer the primary and supporting elements are to each other, the more likely the detected content is going to be what you are looking for. Let's take a look at this primary element and the confidence levels for high and medium rules that are within. So here we go. We're in and we've got our high confidence. Just, just close that a second. We've got our medium confidence and we can add a low confidence if we need to. So for the high confidence, we have SSN and any two supporting elements. For medium confidence, we have SSN and any supporting elements. And we could, if we wanted to, add a low confidence also of just SSN. So we could do that if we wish to. So I'll not change that, I'll bin that off. Uh, but we could do that if we wanted to. I'll go with the recommended settings and if we click down there, we can see all of those elements there and we can take them in and out as we need to, as we need to tweak our, um, our uh, settings here for these confidence levels. So you can see how that works. Okay, we're happy with that, we'll close that off. Or you could save any changes that you made. Cool, we're getting there, we're getting there. Click next. We can review the settings and finish. So what have we got? We've got our EDM classifier name, US healthcare classifier. We can edit that if we want. We've got a description. We can edit that if we want. Our sensitive info types selected for primary elements. We only selected the one you might recall, the social security number for within the US. We can edit those sensitive info types for the most critical sensitive data here if we want to go back and make some final changes. Same for the schema file column settings and the detection rules. I'm happy with all that, so I'm gonna go ahead and click Submit. Okay, so we have successfully created an EDM classifier, but we're not done. There are additional steps to perform. It's almost time to put your new EDM classifier to work. What a great description. The last step is to upload the file containing your org's sensitive info. This is used to populate the structure you set up to create this classifier. Good news for all you PowerShell and command line fans out there, we're gonna get to play a little bit. If you don't like command line stuff, then uh, you're out of luck. But we've got some work to do with, uh, with some command line stuff, but it ain't too bad, I promise. So what we need to do, the next step, we need to use something called the EDM Upload Agent tool to hash and upload your data. This can be done using one computer or you can separate hashing from uploading for greater security. 
Um, so that's that's cool. There are some options there if we want to be more secure. If we uh, have that requirement, we can do so by separate the hashing from the uploading process. To complete this step, you'll need to know the name of the schema that we have just created. So we can copy the name below. Here we go. Let's click on copy to grab that or find it by selecting this EDM classifier from the list and viewing the EDM schema name in the details panel. You'll notice it is by default given us a schema name based on the name we gave it, but taking out all the spaces. So in this case, it's US Healthcare Classifier Schema. We've copied that. Learn more about this? Yes, please, if we could. Uh, this tells us all about how we do the next steps. We'll come back to that in a second. I'm just going to click on done. And in doing so, we should see our new EDM classifier added to the list. We've got a difference here, though. We can see the ones we've already got created are completed in terms of indexing. This one, we've got some work to do. Source file is not yet uploaded. How to upload, if we uh, click on that link, it's going to take us to this lovely page here, how we do this. So lots of good instructions on how we get here. Um, okay, so what do we need to do? First and foremost, we need to go through some steps. We need to hash and upload the sensitive information source table. So in this phase, we create a custom security group and add a user account that you want to use to uh, to perform this operation to the group. We set up the EDM upload agent tool. We use that agent tool to hash with a salt value, the sensitive information source table and upload it. And as we've already seen, the hashing and uploading can be done using one computer or you can separate the hash step from the upload step for greater security. Cool, cool, cool. Let's scroll down a wee bit to get to the good stuff. And some prerequisites here that we need to be aware of. What do we need? We need a work or school account for Microsoft 365 to add to the EDM underscore data uploaders security group. We need a Windows 10 device, which is what I'm using. I am sure, we're, actually I'm not, I'm using Windows 11, aren't I? Um, um, so it does work on Windows 11, obviously they need to update this. Windows Server 2016 with .NET version 4.6.2 or Windows Server 2019 machine running the EDM upload agent. A directory on your upload machine for the following. The EDM upload agent, your sensitive item file in CSV, TSV or pipe format. So patient records, CSV in um, the example they're using here, but in, in our case, it'll be US health records, CSV that we uploaded to our folder earlier in the video. We need the outpush, the outpush. We need the output hash and salt values created in this procedure. The data store name from the EDM XML file. Uh, and so this sounds awful, doesn't it? But it's really not. I've been through this a few times already. And if I can do it, you can too. Um, cool, 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 cool. So we need to set up a security group and a user account. The group must be a security group. It must be called EDM underscore data uploaders. Let me just go to admin.microsoft.com. Let me show you the group. Uh, yeah, that's the account I'm connected with. Cool, cool, cool. Teams and groups, if you please. Active teams and groups. Let me take a look at security groups and there she is EDM underscore data uploaders. It must be created with that exact name and you must add as a member the user account that you want to uh, carry out this function. So go into members. There I am. I'm all ready to go. That step has been completed. Alrighty, what do we need to do next? Uh, we need to download the EDM um, upload agent so we can do that from here. Let's open that up and uh, here we go. It's basically open the same document, but taking us to the exact point in the document where we can get the upload by subscription type. So there is a standard one which will work for most Microsoft 365 tenants. That's the one that I got. Very simple, lightweight download. Uh, you can download ones for commercial and GCC, GCC high and DOD as well. 
So there are different flavors depending on what tenant type that you have. Uh, the one thing I'm not gonna do here, I'm not gonna go through this process because it really is lightweight. Uh, you download it, you install it, it's it's really simple. Uh, put it in a folder of your choice. In, in my case, I've just put it in, in a folder called EDM. Okay, what's the next step? We need to go in to a command prompt or PowerShell and we need to switch to the directory that we have um, uh, installed it to and the directory we want to use. Uh, and then we need to run the command to authorize the agent okay let's do just that okay so for this first step to uh start us with the edm upload agent i'm going to need to go to a command prompt so if i go into my start button let's search for my command prompt i'm gonna grab it open it as an administrator click on yes i'm just gonna change to the EDM folder, and I'm gonna run that first command, which is edm upload agent.exe forward slash authorize. And there we go. We just need to select the uh, work or school account to verify that against, and that is step one. We have authorized successfully um, after, of course, having installed the EDM agent. Uh, this will only work if you've done that quick download and install. So that is step one. Um, what do we need to do next? We need to save our schema. Now we created our schema by uh, creating our classifier. And you remember we, um, we copied the name of the schema um, a bit earlier. I'll have lost that now actually, but um, I can grab it again by going in and uh, grabbing the schema name. So there it is, EDM schema name, US Healthcare Classifier Schema. Copy that and close. So just for ease, I'm gonna not use the, uh, the learn doc. I'm gonna go into my notepad here. Now, what have we already done? We've done the authorized piece. The next thing we need to do is we need to save our schema, which we created in the wizard when we set up the EDM uh, uh, classifier. So we're gonna do EDM upload agent.exe, save schema, data store name, put the schema name in, the output uh, directory, uh, and the path to the output folder. So what are we going to do for that? Uh, so what we need to do is we need to put our schema name in here. Let's just paste that in. So we've got US healthcare classifier schema output directory. Just for ease, I'm gonna keep everything in, the, in that top level folder, EDM. So let's copy that and let's paste that into my command window and command completed successfully that is always a joy fantastic the next thing we need to do we need to connect to the security and compliance powershell uh, to um, get our schema identity uh, and uh, set a path so i just need to change this line here to be our schema name for this. So oh, silly, edit, undo. Um, I uh, copied and pasted something else, didn't I? Uh, so I need, I need, I need, I need the US healthcare classifier schema. Copy that and put that in the place of, of this entry here. So let's copy all that. I'm going to go to my PowerShell window, which is ready here. I've already connected to the security and compliance PowerShell. If you don't know how to do that, it's basically uh, connect hyphen IPPS session. Hit enter. You'll need to authenticate with your work or school account with the appropriate permissions. I'll not do that because I'm already in. So I've connected to that PowerShell. I'm gonna paste in uh, these lines and jobs are good and we've got that done. Okay, that is brilliant. The next thing we need to do, we've um, saved our schema. We've, uh, we've done this part here. We've got the schema and we've set the content path. 
um, the next thing we need to do is we need to upload uh, the data uh, referencing the the data store name which is also going to be our schema name we're then going to reference the data file which is the csv file we uh, uh, uploaded much much earlier in the process we need then to decide where we're going to store the hash uh, and then we uh, need to uh, reference the schema uh, XML and we can put an allowed bad lines percentage on there as well. So that's the example. Here's the actual line that we're going to use here. So again, we need that schema name that we've created. I hope you're keeping up with this. I hope it's not jumping around too much. Um, so we need to have our data store name, which is... Uh, essentially our schema name. So I'll just replace that one from the last one I did. It's US Healthcare Classifier Schema. The data file, where did we store that? We just stored that in the EDM folder. We'll take out that subfolder. And the name of it was, is uh, US underscore healthcare underscore sample file. US underscore healthcare underscore sample file. So that's uh, very similar. So we'll just take out the financial. US underscore health care underscore sample file. Hash location, where do we want the hash to go? We'll just, just for ease, we'll just put that in uh, the EDM folder there again. And we need the uh, name of the schema XML that we downloaded and it's an important point to make actually in uh, in running this save schema earlier on it actually creates that xml file and we can we can see that by going to the folder and there it is i forgot to mention that step so downloading that schema creates that file for us so 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 we need to uh alter uh us uh basically let's just copy uh this once again from up above. Oh, I can't select it properly. Let's grab that and replace it here. And we should be good. We've got an extra A on there. We'll take that out. Well spotted. So we should be good to go. One final check. E DM upload agent.exe upload data data store name US healthcare classifier schema data file is CEDM US underscore healthcare underscore sample file CSV. We're going to put the hash location as CEDM folder. The schema that we're going to reference is the US healthcare classifier schema XML. We don't have to put an allowed bad lines percentage in, but I will here just to allow us up to five uh, bad lines in the uh, in the process, let's copy that, cross all of our fingers, because if you don't get this just right, you're going to get a big no. Press enter, command failed. Uh, okay, the process cannot access the file. CEDM. Ah, this is because I have the CSV file open. Excellent. I've not had that happen before, but um, I've not had the CSV file open before. So I'm just going to come out of it and let's give that another try. Let's see what happens. This There you go. Command has completed successfully. Now we can see what this is doing um, by uh, let's just go into get the session. So I'll need my schema name again. Again, let me just copy that. It's do, do, do. And we can see how far the process is getting. So we'll paste that into there. So we're going to EDM upload agent. We can get the session for the data store name to see what is going on with our process. Paste that in. And yeah, we've we can see that uh, things are happening. It's uh, it's creating things it's it's going great guns so if we go into here we do a quick refresh we saw that our source file was not yet uploaded let's refresh the page and we should see something happening with our new classifier when it decides to load 
and load and load. There we go, we are indexing. It's at 0% complete at the moment. So we can check the process of this using the command line to see how far it's getting. Um, and when it's complete, we will know uh, because it'll say indexing complete. Okay, it's about five minutes later. I paused the video. I did a little bit of editing of what I recorded so far and uh, now I'm back and I can see that the indexing for this classifier has now completed. That's great. So we've got our US healthcare classifier. If we go into it, we can see what we've got. We can edit the EDM sensitive info type. We can delete it if we want to. I'm not gonna do that because I've just gone to a lot of trouble to create it. We can see all of our details, etc., etc. So if we go into sensitive info types now and we filter by publisher, we should have a shiny new one. There it is. We've got our US healthcare classifier. Absolutely awesome stuff. Now we can actually go ahead and test this. Uh, at this point, right from within the sensitive info type. And to do so, we can use the file that we uploaded, the, uh, the CSV file. So if we click on uh, test, we need to upload a file to test whether these sensitive info types detects the matching elements you specified. Let's upload our file. Let's go to our EDM folder. Let's grab that CSV sample file that we had earlier, open it up. And uh, there it is, let's go for a test. Match results, let's have a wee look and see what results we get. And after a few seconds, there we go, we have detected the following in US healthcare sample CSV file. We've got uh, one US healthcare classifier, we've got some low, three unique matches, we've got some medium matches, we've got some high matches. So the classifier is working uh, as we would want it to. So, so with some real content, if we use this classifier, this sensitive information type within um, Microsoft Purview functions such as information protection, data loss prevention, we can, we can reference our sensitive information type in those rules and we know it's going to work because we've tested it. Absolutely brilliant. I love this. So what does that mean in real terms? Well, let's go and have a look and see in, as an example, let's say DLP, data loss prevention. Let's go in, let's go into policies and, and describe what I've, uh, in more detail, what I've just been referencing. Let's create a policy uh, and we'll go and we'll quickly create a custom policy and we will build that out, uh, custom policy, name a description, if we're doing this for real, put some good stuff in there, uh, just skip the admin units, let's just select some locations, I'll just take a few out, just to make it simple, I'm not going to complete this, but uh, this is where I want to get to, I want to define the policy settings, I want to create or customize advanced DLP rules, and in doing so, here we go, I can go on and create a rule, and let's just call this, uh, well, let's put healthcare classifier uh, as an example. And I can now add a condition. I want the content to contain, and if I click on add, I can add a sensitive info type. And there it is. We have our US healthcare classifier. This is our EDM classifier. We can select this here and we can add it and we can match our confidence levels. Absolutely brilliant. So we are referencing within DLP and we can do this in other features of Microsoft Purview as well. We're referencing a sensitive info type that we have created for an exact data match classifier. Really cool stuff indeed. And that's how you do it. That's it. Thank you so much for watching as ever. Please, again, a reminder, hit the subscribe button. Most of you still have that. When I'm looking at my analytics, most of you are still not subscribed. Give it a click. It takes a second. Free to do so. Helps me so, so much. Hit that thumbs up for me as well. If you've liked the video, that helps me to grow too. And a reminder, I know I'm always going on about it, but it really means a lot and it helps a lot. Hit that notification bell. Hope you enjoyed the video. Lots more to come on the channel. Let me know what you think. Let me know your feedback, your comments. 
uh, your experience with Exact Data Match. Did I miss anything? Did I get anything wrong in your opinion? Always happy to talk. Mention in the comments, find me on Twitter at M365Rising. Until next time, see you soon. Bye.